Mental health encompasses emotional, psychological, and social well-being. It influences perception and behavior and determines how an individual handles stress, interpersonal relationships, and decision-making. Though many people may have mental health concerns from time to time, it becomes an illness when the ongoing signs and symptoms cause frequent stress and affects their ability to function properly, which can make them miserable and cause problems in their daily lives and relationships. Mental illness does not discriminate as different people are more deeply affected by certain things than others. It can affect anyone regardless of age, gender, social status, background, or any other aspect of cultural identity. Unfortunately, stigmas are attached to mental health conditions far more than other diseases and disabilities. And because of this misconception, people often suffer in silence and their conditions go untreated. But without treatment, mental health disorders can reach a crisis point. Mental illness is nothing to be ashamed of because it is a medical problem, just like other diseases. As the World Health Organization states, there is no health without mental health. It's important for caregivers, friends, and loved ones to understand the impact that mental health has on a daily life. Talking openly about it can encourage those who are suffering to seek help and find a support network. Very well said. The strength of a person's mental health is not always shown on faces. It is not always spoken through voices, nor is it written in legacy books. Mental health complications have evolved into a deep crisis that affects upwards of a billion people globally. Most people are aware of the worsening effects of substance abuse on mental health. But are we also aware of the strenuous effects of economic hardships on mental health? Factors such as difficult work environments, huge debts, insufficient income, irreparable conflict, extreme poverty, racism, and slavery are very detrimental to mental health especially in situations of no way out, where people lack effective solutions to severe problems. To protect our mental health, we must find and innovate ways to eat well, live well, eliminate hardships, and be genuinely happy. The most important factor in alleviating mental health is raising strong, safe, healthy, and happy children. As parents, citizens, leaders, and humans, we must have adequate self-love in addition to caring very deeply for others. In an ideal world, there should be minimal profitability in mental health, but the market is currently valued at approximately half a trillion dollars with profitable opportunities increasing daily. Co-host and I will have our usual discussion shortly, but for right now, let's watch this special report. Perspectives will be right back. It's impossible to talk about health and well-being without talking about mental health. And mental health is not only when somebody has a mental illness. Our daily lives, our work, family, time with loved ones, our experiences, it's all part of what we go through as human beings. Now, the conversation on mental health is more important than ever. There is a common misconception around mental health. Many of us have fallen to the trap of thinking of mental health as solely related to mental illness. However, it's possible to have a mental health condition and be mentally fit. And the absence of a mental health condition doesn't necessarily ensure mental fitness. People go about their business with a lot of burden on their shoulders. And when they share with friends, sometimes they don't get that necessary support they seek. Hey, what's up, guys? What's going on? Hey. Snow! What's up, man? What's up? Hey, man. What's happening, bro? Man, chilling, bro. I do look <sighs> a little bit out of place. Man, bro. Everything is crazy right now. You know, job, my wife, family, and all that. Uh, bro, bros, it's crazy. That's what we go through every day. Dude, man up. Nah, man right. up, chest it. You can chest what it. You'll you be man. You don't understand, bro. Bros, I beg give us one bottle. It's not all cases that the words man up can fix. Sometimes, you need to pay close attention to the other party and offer some sort of support 
when they're passing through pain. Some people resort to drinking to ease their pain, especially when no one is listening to their plight. These people could look like they have everything going for them. They look good, look happy, but could be fighting a battle within. Often because of misconceptions about mental health and mental fitness, people often suffer in silence and their conditions go untreated. Mental health awareness is an important social movement to both improve understanding and increase access to healthcare. So what are the benefits of mental health awareness? It helps you understand your symptoms. Sometimes there is a magic in having a diagnosis. Despite the stigma around the term, it's simply a shorthand for a collection of symptoms that occur together. Better education is important. It's crucial for caregivers, employers, parents, family members, and loved ones to understand the impact that mental health has on daily life. Building a support network and speaking with a licensed mental health professional is critical to alleviating symptoms of many mental health conditions. As we go about our daily business, let's not forget to pay attention to our mental health and that of those around us. Let's support each other to make sure that we raise the awareness around mental health and of course eradicate the stigma around mental illness. Kenna Kingsley, Arise News. That was a, a mind-opening or a, a, a serious situation. I think mental health is actually more serious than we give it credit, credibility for. And the, truth, the, the thing, the issue is that you want to decide which is, you, you, you have to know whether what you have is a mental health problem or whether you're just depressed over something. I think those lines need to be drawn for people to know whether they should when to, when, heart and when to seek help. But as it is now, a lot of people are probably going through mental health and thinking it's just one of those things and taking Absolutely. it in their stride without realizing that they need to seek Absolutely. medical help. I think what struck me the most with the entire mental health um, predicament is how it's such a two-way street. So parents who have mental health tend to be, be very abusive to their children and children who are abused tend to grow up with very high risk of being mentally ill. And also the World Health Organization stated that over a trillion dollars is lost in productivity, lost productivity when people are mentally ill. So we're losing people on a daily basis to mental illnesses. I mean, I think it's about 700,000 who die annually from suicide alone. And before it gets to the stage of suicide, they've been through a lot of decline in mental health from depression, from anxiety, from several factors. And we see on the flip side that there's profitability in the market highly profitable. The, um, the uh, antidepressant market alone is billions, lots of billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. So that two-way street is what you well, know, struck me the most, the, especially the parent-child You can almost compare that to cancer too, where they say, oh, yeah. you know, it's the, most, it's the most profitable illness for people in the um, mm -hmm. uh, manufacturing chain. But right. you know, matter, you said something about parents suffering from mental health. Sometimes the parents don't necessarily suffer from, suffer from mental health. They probably think they're disciplining the child. Or they think, or they don't. Well, they speaking specifically about the ones that suffer well, from mental yeah, well, health, they, yeah, the ones that suffer they tend from, to be abusive. To but some children. parents without suffering from mental health, so it's so important health to protect abusive. the children's health. No, so that's some the parents, part. even mm. without suffering from mental health, are abusive. Absolutely, to but their, to based it. on mental health, though. Yeah, mm -hmm. but what I'm saying is that that abuse mm -hmm. can cause the child to have mental health issues. Oh, and the course. parents mm -hmm. not understanding why this child is going this way, especially if it's a child that everything is provided for them, you yeah. know, money, school fees, everything. They yeah. don't lack in any aspect. You're saying whether or not the parent has mental health issues. No, no, I'm saying that general. it's not all parents that have mental health issues that are abusive to their children. Some mm. parents are just more strict than other parents and mm. believe in the power of the cane or whatever mm -hmm. discipline they want to accost on that child. Yes, there's a probability and some of there. This um, actions can make the children react deeper than maybe any other child would. Mm. People's sensitivity levels are at different, different rates. So maybe one child mm -hmm. might not see it as a big deal and grow past it. Another child would not be able to grow past Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So this mental health issue has to be addressed from both the parents and the child's Absolutely. angle. Absolutely. And it's so critical that we're protecting our children's health by every means possible. Yeah, but I think also letting, mm -hmm. you have parents so also So we can try guardians. to break that cycle Yeah, but even parents health. and guardians have to also seek some form of counseling or some form 
form of Absolutely. professional advice to better enable them cope with this. Because Absolutely. when you are judging the child who is suffering from mental health, Absolutely. you are judging the child as if the we child doesn't have to any be issues. We to children. Yeah, but whatsoever. you are judging the child dispassionately because you think mm -hmm. the child is just being exhibitant. But whereas the child has mental health issues. Absolutely. You know. Now on to introducing our guests for today. First off is Wale Olushola, a transformational life coach who is certified in neuro-linguistics, programming, cognitive behavioral therapy, and life coaching. Wale has a Bachelor of Arts degree in linguistics and a Master in Business Administration. He's also a pastor, a public speaker, and an author of many books. Wale had an 18-year banking career which saw him work first at First Bank of Nigeria, then GT Bank and BGL Asset Management, where he resigned as managing director and proceeded to take on his coaching practice full time. Wale is the lead coach of Pronia Resources and the CEO of TrueSoft Limited, amongst other laudable ventures and initiatives. Nice one. And also joining us on the program is Ugo Chijui Tomi who is known as the Eagle and a Chief Encouraging Officer. She's a Certified Integrative Life Coach, a Neuro Linguistic Programming Practitioner, an Emotional Freedom Technique Practitioner, and a Clinical Psychodynamic Physiotherapist in Training. Before transiting as a Life Coach and Therapist, Ugo earned a BA Honours in Business Management and MSc in International Business Economics at the University of Westminster. Ugo is very passionate about transforming the lives of her clients as she transforms their minds so they fly like eagles, as she believes that we are all made to fly. Ugo helps her clients build the right confidence to conquer the world, eliminate fear and other limiting beliefs, and develop a sense of worthiness that becomes unique to everyone she works with. Fantastic to have Absolutely. both of you here. Absolutely. Right? You. you know, this mental issue is a, is a topic that is never ending. It's as, if, it's as if every time we begin to scratch the surface, you know, something else appears. It's like an onion with mm. so many layers. You know. Okay, let's start with you, Wally. I know that you personally have gone through mental health issues and mm. got to the point of almost cont contemplating suicide. <laughs> so from experience, one like one would want to know, how did you overcome it? What were the trigger what are the trigger signs to look out for? Where you will know that this issue is a mental health issue and not just a phase you're going through in terms of depression that you can snap out of. Okay. I so I, the the easiest way to know is uh, when somebody just suddenly starts isolating himself. He doesn't want to see people again. He's scared of going out. So you definitely know that the person is battling with mental health. And what led to mine was because um, I lost a lot of money in the capital market in 2008. Mm. And although at that time, I didn't know it was depression. Mm. I used to be uh, the head of intercessor of the prayer team of my church. So I sort of spiritualized everything. That this must be a devil, it must be a demon. So I started praying and fasting. But, you know, in retrospect, after I went for training and became a therapist, I was now equipped with tools to know that what I was actually going through then was depression. Mm -hmm. But ignorantly, I thought it was a spiritual attack. Mm -hmm. And you know, something that happens with depression is this. Your cognitive abilities begin to shut down. Mm -hmm. So you can no longer make the right decisions because you are not thinking properly. So after I lost the money, I just suddenly one day, without any plans, resigned my job. Mm -hmm. That's not a rational decision. And my final payoff was just enough to about enough to pay off the loans I had taken. Mm. And so I was left with nothing. Mm. Mm. And then the poverty started so much that we were sent packing from our house, mm. myself, my wife, and two children, mm. all because of what happened and because I didn't go for help. I didn't even understand this. And even if I had wanted to go for help, I still would not have gone for it because of the stigma that people, you know, because when you here mental health in Nigeria, the first thing that comes to your mind is that naked guy mm. on the streets. That's mm. so I just kept everything to myself. And eventually, 
I kept managing everything. And, and the truth is that at that point in time, a lot of people will come and meet me for advice. I'll give them quality advice. Mm. But I myself needed somebody to give me advice, needed somebody to help me, but I wasn't doing it properly. Until that night, when I, I, had, I had enough, I had had enough, and I just decided that I think the best thing is to mm. end everything. Mm. So I got some poison. When Wendy, what poison was this? Mm -hmm. uh, sniper. That and sniper thing that they sell. Yes. That should be banned, by the way. But anyway, go on. <laughs> so wow. I got it, went to my wife's room, went to, you know. But kissed. sorry, was your wife aware of your depression? And how long was the depression for? She wasn't aware. It was for about, it was for about two years. You know. Wow, that's a long time. You know, when you are going through mental health issues, which you'll probably cover, you have that ability to disguise. Okay. Mm. To disguise it well as if everything is well. Mm. So if people around you are not trained or equipped to spot the signs, mm. they won't know. So the only, the only times I would really feel bad was when I was alone. Mm. It would be as if the walls were caving in. Wow. But in the midst of people, I could go on normally. You could manage. I could manage. But gradually, I started isolating myself from friends, from family. I never wanted to go anywhere again. Please continue from where you went to get the poison. OK, so that mm. night, I kissed my wife while she was mm. sleeping. Went to my children's rooms, my son, my daughter. But I think when I saw them, I wanted to go and say goodbye. When I saw them, something caught within me that I can't push my own problems on these children. Mm. They did nothing. They will live with this stigma for the rest of their lives. Oh, that's the boy that his father took his life. Unbelievable, I want to cry. <laughs> you, you understand? So mm. that kind of slowed me down. Mm. And I went back to bed. But I didn't really sleep. I was just tossing on the bed. 6.30 a.m. the next morning, out of the blues, Larry Olushala just calls me. And the first thing he said, Baba, God said, don't take your life. Wow. He still, Larry never knew anything. Never, he, said, he said, he still has a need for your life. Wow. I said, so where do we go from here? He said, come for coaching, certification. After you've done that, if you still feel it's not enough, then you are free to do whatever you want to do. Knowing that, Larry knowing that, I will have that light bulb moment. So it was on the third day of the certification that I had that light bulb moment that it suddenly occurred to me that I wasn't okay here. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's how I but started. But did you tell your wife? It was later she knew. Okay, much later. It was much later. It was much later she knew and she burst into tears. Wow. Because we, so we were not equipped with how to spot it and how to help people who are going through mm. it. Mm. It's really quite depressing mm. when, when, when the loved ones are, go through <clears throat> or try to handle people who have mental health, mental health issue. And like you rightfully said, I think it's one, even the loved ones themselves need to go for therapy. Yes. To mm. enable them to know how to cope with people with mental health issues. Absolutely. Because, for instance, if your wife had had some therapy or had an inclination that this was what was your issue was, she would seek, she herself, or would seek professional help. That's what I want to ask you, um, Ugo. That don't you think that provisions should be made for parents? Because a lot of parents and guardians and loved ones are just as frustrated as the victim. So what steps, pertinent steps, do you think parents need to take to help them cope better, like what Lee just said, and re look out for the signs. What do they need to do? Do they need to go for therapy? What do they need to do? So <clears throat> what's quite interesting is what Wally showed was there were levels to these things. If you realize he started off feeling um, isolating himself, but mm. it, it gradually grew. It mm -hmm. gradually progressed. Yeah, but you can mm -hmm. go through those feelings even when you go when you lose a loved one or you Abs lose a job or whatever. Absolutely. So does that mean that anytime you feel like that, it automatically means that it's a mental health issue? Absolutely. So the problem we're finding is when do you begin to spot these things yes. as a family? And how do you interject? How do you actually engage with somebody going through this? And I'll give you a very live example of a client that I worked with. Okay. And this client I worked with, she was in her 20s, early mm -hmm. 20s. Mm -hmm. And obviously, she's living with her family in the house. And they're noticing gradually she's locking herself up in the room. Mm -hmm. she's, re she's not having dinner anymore. She's not coming downstairs to have dinner. But... 
The parents at the time just thought she was being difficult. Oh, there you go, teenagers or, you know, adults who are living with us do not respect us and all of this stuff. But what they didn't realize was she was struggling to stay alive. This girl at the time was contemplating so much thoughts, suicidal thoughts. She was just thinking of all sorts. But she didn't have the audacity to tell them because a lot of its stigma is coming from our upbringing. Again, how were we trained to understand that our mental health is so important? How do we approach our families and how would they react back to us? So what she found was, what I found when I started working with her is she was just like Wally, she couldn't tell them what was going on. Mm. For the fear of disappointing the parents, the fear of saying, what snap out of it do you know who you are and that's the problem we've been taught that mental health is something you can snap out of you yeah. can't because if you do not interject at a time just like so many people were losing lots of lives because nobody's know when to interject that so coming back to the question how do families begin to help these people this is what i did with this client i started to tell the client as much as your daughter needs therapy you also need therapy mm. Because this is not just a fact that a child has suddenly had mental health. You know, psychodynamic teaches us that a mental health is a manifestation of unresolved conflict. Mm. So what does that mean? It's progressed. Mm -hmm. It's just waiting for the right time to boom, mm. come out. Mm. So in order to understand that, I've got to work with the parents, the clients, to understand what's been What's been the relationship with this child? Mm -hmm. What exactly have you done or what haven't you done? Let's go back to the root cause. Let's excavate. Let's understand where there was a bit of dysfunction that we can actually begin to mend. So that's one of the key things, making sure that the family themselves understand the importance that as our child is going through this, we also need to understand. Absolutely. Another thing I started to realize is educating them with mm -hmm. the right words. Okay, you know? this is the, 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 the parents. The parents, okay. the families involved. Oh, the carers. The carers. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. I mean, you would see beautiful girls. I, I think there was one time there was a Miss World lady who had taken her life. Yes, and yes. she was obviously very family orientated. But what was wrong there? How wasn't it easy for the family to spot? The reason why I feel that they're not able to spot it and interject or even help is that assumption that you should be fine. Mm -hmm. You know, with the right word, pick up yourself. So what languages do you say to those people when they're going through this? Are you sensitive? Are you understanding that they are processing things the wrong way? Because when you talk about mental health, we're talking about chemical imbalances. I was just going to ask mm -hmm. that. The chemical imbalances in the brain. So something is wrong. So you're, you're telling her, you know, you can get up, you can do it, go get it. She's looking at it from a place of, so you already have given up on me. So they're misinterpreting information. They're looking out for body languages of their parents or their families to be able to say, okay, you know what? They mm. don't even believe I can get over this. What's the point? So the languages we use, how we interact with Very them. Very important. And I always say, you can't do it alone. The parents, the family also need to seek help. Mm. Thank you, Ugo. And my next question cuts across both of you. Wale, you shared a beautiful story. And I think what touched me most was when you said your children stopped you from making that next step. Our yes. children are the most important aspects of our lives. We just want to make sure they grow up as healthy and as safe as possible. So can you share with us what you were able to learn from Larry and Lushola that transformed your life and made you become a pastor, transformational coach, and just brought out the wholesome you back again? All right. Before, uh, before I had those issues, I was already a pastor. Mm. However, I've learned with time, maybe because of my certifications, it gives me a, a bird's eye view of situations that you cannot address mental health issues with us here at the Lord. With what? With us here at the Lord. Mm -hmm. Biblical approach. Okay. Yes, okay. you can't. Mm, of course. It has to involve a professional. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, pastors are not equipped to handle mm -hmm. mental health issues. Mm -hmm. yep. Uh, there are some. There might be some cases that are overtly spiritual, but ninety percent of mental health issues need to be handled mm -hmm. by, by professionals. professionals, right? Because they are the ones equipped to know how to do these stuff. 
And you know, myself and my wife, we're also relationship and marriage coaches. And when people come to us, especially those who want to get married, we always recommend therapy for them. Mm. For, both, for both of them. You know why? Because a lot of people, like I was sharing with you before, are carrying unresolved traumas mm. into marriage, which will eventually snowball into major issues, mm -hmm. which will start occurring in the marriage. Mm. Now, when I started the coaching certification on that, Larry, mm -hmm. it was on the third day that the light bulb moment came. Okay. And what happened? I saw that because of the tens of millions I had lost in the capital markets, mm. my major focus day and night mm -hmm. was number one, self-pity. Mm. I kept pitying myself. How can this happen to me? And you, and you see, self-pity, contrary to what a lot of people think, is a mental conversation mm -hmm. that goes on in your mind 24-7. So I kept pitying myself. How could this have happened to me? And based on that, I became fixated on a lack, a scarcity, mental, a scarcity mentality. Okay. Now, that obsession with that scarcity mentality was mm. what got me depressed. Mm -hmm. So when I went for coaching mm -hmm. and that light bulb moment came, okay. I began to see that I cannot define myself based on what has happened to me, and mm. much more than that. My mm. situations, my circumstances are not the real me. So mm. it helped me to redefine who I really was. Okay. That I'm not my circumstances, mm. I'm not my situations, I'm much more than that. And you can and start over? Yes, and yeah. that was how I started the okay. journey mm. into recovery. I really like that. And Ugo, I think what I liked most when co-host was reading your bio was that you said that you like to coach people to conquer the world with confidence. <laughs> Tell us, how do we conquer the world with confidence? You see, a lot of it has, and, and this is from a personal experience, um, one of the funniest things is when we sat down together with Wale in the room, I realized that we've all been coming from the same stock. So I also got coached by Lanre Olushola. Okay. And, um, I started my journey because I was having identity crisis, mm. okay? You grow up and you're being told a certain thing about yourself. But then it takes a while for you to realize, okay, there is so much more to us. There mm. is so much more to who we are. Mm. And so how do you begin to go back to actually realize your potential? And this was what led me to understanding the need to actually screw deep, Dig deep, deep into who you are, understand okay. what you carry, understand your potentials, knowing fully well, just like Wale just said, that if there is a loss of one issue in terms of money, that's mm -hmm. not the end. It means mm -hmm. that, you know what, there is so much more that I can achieve. So I started that because I started to know that the problem is people do not know who they are. Mm -hmm. People do not know what they are mm -hmm. and they do not know what they carry. So mm -hmm. most of the times I sit down with people and I say, you know what, you've only just scratched the surface of who you are. Mm -hmm. You are unlimited. You've got so much Absolutely. potential that mm -hmm. if you can only take your eyes from the issue that you have right now mm -hmm. and begin to look into the future it's only going to go bliss from there it's only going to get better from there okay. so those are the kind of things i do empowering people understanding that your present circumstances do not actually dictate your future life and that the environment you see one of the key things i wanted to actually share is a lot of us are judging our present environment and society mm -hmm. we look at the condition of our country we look at the conditions of where we are and we think this is it mm -hmm. whereas i'm saying no you're beyond that environment you're beyond the current circumstances and you know what you've been actually placed on this environment because you can actually make the environment work for you it all starts with what's inside of you that's good mm -hmm. but what are the four types what are the different types of mental health that people suffer from again that's so many types um, I always say it starts with almost the non uh, um, visible ones okay yes. so you've got the people who are getting on every day going about their businesses they're still able to manage it as it's where you know mm. they're stressed you're talking about the people who have high leveled work stress load so they're managing that and then there's the unmanageable ones like the mal you know maladaptive ones where people have 
anxious, people are losing their uh, um, um, ability to actually have everyday activities, they're removing mm -hmm. themselves from the society. And I always say that in order for you to, to, to spot these things is people around you need to be more aware. Mm. Okay, so if we're having conversations with, for instance, Ugo, and Ugo is acting a certain way, ask questions. How are you? Mm -hmm. How do you feel? We don't ask those questions. Are you okay? What's, you know, tell me about your We don't feelings. ask it intentionally. No. Sometimes we just ask it in passing, because I use that a lot. How are you? How are you? How are you doing? But is it really intentional to like really get that feedback from the person? Absolutely. And, and we can start this well where the kids are, our children are young. I'll give you an example. I wake, I, every time I have, I've got a little one who's five years old mm. and I get her to be in tune with her feelings from a young age. I say to her, how do you feel today? Give me, give me from the scale of zero to 10. Are you feeling 10, very happy, or are you feeling sad? Intentional. And she, she's learning to know because by the time she gets older and the scales are looking like, oh, all the time I'm feeling sad, she's able to spot these things. So feelings and able to teach people how mm. to begin to check in with themselves, check in all the time. Yeah, but how do you let, how do you let people know that they have a mental health issue? Because there are some people who are in denial. And then there are some who, even when they're being treated for mental health issues, they don't take their medication because it makes them lethargic, blah, blah, blah. So how do you begin to address them? Okay. And get, get it across to them that, look, you need to seek help. And, and this is a very vital um, question. The reason why is I'd go back to a key client that I've been talking about. Mm -hmm. Now we started working together and I knew that my goal was to be able to get her to understand she does need actually medical um, help which means she needs to take drugs for this because mm -hmm. she's borderline psychosis at this point. But I didn't go in instantly telling her you need help. It started off with the conversations mm. because a lot of the time they need you to, they want to be able to trust you to tell you how they're feeling. So if we take Wale for instance and, you know, able to find somebody who he can say, you know what, I'm feeling really horrible today. Mm -hmm. So they're looking for that. Mm -hmm. So what I would always advise is begin the conversations, open up the dialogue. Do not go in for the kill to say you need help. Because once you tell somebody who is struggling to accept they need help, you are literally getting them to get to the point of even, oh my goodness, I do need help. And I don't want to face it. All right? Because nobody wants to know that mental health. Because again, it's a stigma. We've been told growing up that you must be mad, you must be on the street mm -hmm. to have mental health. But mental health right now is more important than anything. Just like you go get your body check, mm -hmm. we're supposed to have our minds checked. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the key things that I keep saying is one of the big thing is I'm so big on everybody, especially in our community. We all need to at least see a therapist once in a while. Mm -hmm. It's so important. Everybody, whether or not you're, mm -hmm. you're visibly suffering from mental health. This is what I'm saying, because mm -hmm. that is when we start having things in check. Okay. Right. If we have that ability, like in the, you know, um, going in the UK, they've got like organisations mm -hmm. where um, they have a, so a solution where people come in there and get right. accessible men um, therapists at a mm -hmm. very decent price because for them it's important that people are able to have that ability to go in and mm -hmm. have a chat with people. I agree with that. And um, I mean, sometimes it's also if you sometimes you can have that therapist within your network. It could be your best friend. It could be that person you can confide in, tell anything to and they give you the very best feedback. It doesn't have to necessarily be a coach, but of course, the coaches, they help, especially people who have been through isolation. I mean, there was a person I spoke to recently was doing perfectly fine in the US, um, encountered a law enforcement issue, was taken in, was going through financial crisis and went to, you know, cause some mayhem somewhere, just being angry and didn't expect it to lead to being arrested. So this person was arrested and I was like, oh my God, are you okay? And I'm trying to re really be sympathetic. And he's like, you know, I was taken to the psych ward afterwards and I came back perfect. I had this therapy. I had all the help I needed. I took two weeks off thinking of what was troubling me prior to me going in. So sometimes that therapy, that help, that support, it's massive. I agree with you. Yeah, and, and I wanted to just say this. It's not just that we're dealing with a direct trauma. 
mm -hmm. there is also intergenerational trauma, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that is big because we think that we're just here, but we're carrying baggages. Our parents have carried and transferred unconsciously their baggage into us, the certain beliefs that we've carried on. And so if we're not able to check in with ourselves, what is it that I'm carrying that has come from my parents that isn't serving me at the moment, that is limiting me, that's making me feel a certain way, mm. then how do we begin? Well, can I ask, can I ask a, a, a question here? Because I remembered Wally was saying that you know, he had issues and that's what triggered your you know, depression mm. in mental health. But is there, are there situations where there's not necessarily any inheritance or any problem that you have, but because of some chemical imbalance or the other? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people think that mental health is something that is hereditary or that mm -hmm. you go through Substance some abuse. emotional turmoil mm -hmm. that has never been addressed. Yes, that may be true. But what about if there is no such thing as an emotional trauma in your past? And it's some chemical imbalance. Has it, has it been medically proven that it can be a chemical imbalance? I think biological, chemical, or not. something to do with your brain. Maybe, so maybe biological. Th there's something missing, or mm -hmm. something is not quite right. Mm -hmm. So it, is, is it is there a is there any proof to show that you can have mental health issues based on chemical imbalance without necessarily having any childhood trauma? Ah, well, well, yeah, yeah, very, very. Oh, it, it, it actually happens very often, and that's why. At times, or oh, you are, or oh, people with the issue are giving antidepressants to use, mm -hmm. so that it kind of makes up for the chemical imbalance. Because that, I worked with someone like that, and when I saw that, it was going because I don't do medical prescription. So when I saw that it was getting to that level, I had to. Refer. To refer him to someone else who was equipped to do that. So that happens a lot. And you know, as Nigerians, we normally trivialize most things. You hear people mm. say stuff like, when people have mental health issues in Nigeria, just give them a credit alert. And then, the, <laughs> you, you know, the way mm. we normally trivialize mm. things. Yeah. Uh, just joke about But can this. that alleviate the mental health issues, though? Well, Especially if it was caused by financial hardships. I think mm -hmm. it should. <laughs> but this is the chemical imbalance you're talking about now, which necessarily means there's no cause for the mental health state. It's just because it's a medical problem. Yes, As but opposed to that you have something that happened to you in the past that is now making you be the way you are now. Oh, of course, you of understand? course. Mm. So when, when I was going through mine, some certain things happened. Number one, there was a lack of motivation to do anything. Mm. I just wanted to be in bed all day mm -hmm. There was that lack of motivation, loss of appetite, loss mm. of sleep. Just stay in bed and do nothing. Oh, wow. But yours was because of a loss. It was because of a financial yeah, loss. Financial what loss. about those that don't have any cause to be in this situation? Be, so, but medically, something is wrong with their brain, which is why they are where they are. Yeah, so like bipolar. Or, exactly. Autism, like something like bipolar or whatever. Do you yeah. understand? So, medical, so uh, they're biological. genetics mm -hmm. involved sometimes, mm -hmm. okay? So some people with medical illnesses mm -hmm. have, uh, as scientists have proven, is because it's in the genes, okay? okay. So parents can pass on. Um, again, if you remember when I said about checking in with unconscious um, stuff that you're carrying, it, re it also refers to where have I picked this up. So, so yes, you are right. Genetically, we can be passed on medical and mm. um, mental illnesses unknownly to us. Okay. So how do we stop this is what the problem is now. So if we go to back to the parent who had a mental health issue okay. and was able to solve that problem, exactly. then it interjects to the next generation. Mm. So we're not moving it on right. from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. it, it, all the chemicals in the brain can be corrected. So it's not necessarily a DNA thing. It can be corrected. It can. It's a cause and effect um, situation. There's something causing it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So let's take, for instance, you've got a, a, a chemical imbalance, right? Mm -hmm. And you aware about it, you see a doctor, they're able to correct it, give mm -hmm. you a drug that starts to stabilize it. Mm. Yes, after a while, some people do not like the drugs because they do have some effects. But yeah, yes, said it makes them lethargic. It makes them nauseous. Mm -hmm. They make, nauseous yes, so it, it does, some people do react to the drug, but mm -hmm. it does have a long-term benefit because what it then does is stabilizes your chemical imbalances so that you can begin to almost live with it or even find a way okay, to so work with it. Okay, so it makes you nauseous and lethargic for a period 
period and after a while you balance absolutely because i think a lot of people don't, they don't go past that period of nausea or period of lethargy so you find them or another situation i've heard is where it makes them hyper as of the time when they're taking the medication, they are now overactive, hyperactive, over happy, the whole nine yards. Do you understand? So at some point, mm. you know, where, where do, do you as a carer or a loved one accommodate those excesses, hoping that over time, you know, the person will stabilize? And that's where it's very important that you as a carer also see a therapist. Okay. and get help mm. because how do you how do you handle your child who was behaving normal suddenly just erratic so annoyed angry you've got to know okay this will pass this too shall pass mm -hmm. so i'll give you an instance when you're not a family is not engaging a help understanding okay my child has just decided to start breaking plates in the kitchen she's mm -hmm. losing her mind let's call the police the police comes restrain the child and starts to even make the situation worse, worse. Mm -hmm. so that's what we do we look at the situation as it's it is oh we can solve it no this is beyond what we can do so that carer that family needs to then engage with actually a professional begin to find out the best way to deal with the situation, find out the way to work with this situation mm -hmm. so that you're not making it worse. Mm -hmm. In fact, you're helping your child Thank or you your family much. get better. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you very much, Hugo. Thank you very much, Wally. Great and insights. Thank you. Our audience have learned one or two things from what we have discussed today. I know I have. Mm -hmm. <laughs>this mental health issue is a never it's a never ending saga and we hope that as the days go by we begin to find solutions and ways to better the lives of those going through this ailment it is not just the bruises on the body that hurts it is also the wounds of the heart and the scars on the mind be dedicated to change the way in which people see mental illness at all levels of society if not for yourself advocate for those who are struggling in silence Vulnerability sounds like truth and feels like courage, but truth and courage aren't always comfortable, they are, but they are never weaknesses. So there is hope even when your brain tells you there isn't. Self-care is how you take your power back. And always remember, life is a learning curve. That's all we have time for today. You've been watching Perspectives here on Arise News with me, Ruth Osime. And with me, Ola Torera Majakudumi Oniru. Take the very best care of your health, especially your mental health, as it is the topmost essential to achieving daily and lifetime goals. Give all the love, peace, and happiness possible to yourself and to everyone you encounter. Avoid stressors and enrich yourself with lots of sunlight, smiles, and good relationships. The key to a better world today is humanity. Our world needs a much stronger dosage of healthy love, care, and compassion. Thank you so much for watching Perspectives. Thank you to our special guests for joining us today. Have a great weekend and see you all soon. Goodbye.